this episode of Subnautica, brace yourself as we make more epic upgrades to the mansion, including a brand new alien containment and a well-needed farm for Flora. But the excitement doesn't end there. We're on a heartwarming quest to reunite with our new beloved cuttlefish companion, which requires traveling to the dangerous dunes. But our journey only gets more dangerous from there as we return back to the Lost River, retrieving the blue tablet, our key to the final alien site, surrounded by boiling hot lava and dangerous enemies. Ah, what a beautiful day. We have the sun, the water, more water. All I need now is a volleyball named Wilson, which reminds me, let's go uh, check on our water filtration system that we crafted last episode. I was meaning to make more than one of these, but after I finished the first one, the power went out, so I had to solve that issue. But it looks like we're doing good now. We're at 75 power, thanks to the bioreactor, probably. Where are we at on this? Let's take a look. Filtration complete. Okay. Oh, that's all you get. Wow. Well, I was kind of thinking that you would get a lot more salt and a lot more filtered water from that. So that answers the question that we, uh, yeah, we, we do need to create more of these. In fact, probably a lot more than I was originally thinking. I was thinking maybe two or three, but now I'm thinking we probably need like seven. Now, one of you guys told me in the comments section to try building another alien containment inside the large room. They said you're going to be shocked. You're going to be incredibly excited to see what happens. Oh, wow. That is huge. That is so much bigger. Perfect. Okay. So obviously my natural inclination is to want to stack these even higher, but uh, we have some issues with the building right now. So we're working on them. I think we'll bring our crab squids over here into that larger aquarium. I think that makes the most sense. And what we'll do is actually grab our crash fish from our storage lockers in here and just throw those back in because for some reason, despite you guys saying it normally works, I was not able to actually shoot the crash fish from the propulsion cannon. I don't know why. I don't know what the deal was. Oh, wow, look, our eggs hatch. I forgot about those. So they're lava lizards. That's interesting. Those are kind of creepy looking. All right, come here, crab squids. We're going to put you in a bigger... Oh, I'm out of inventory space. Let me just drop these in here. There we go. Come here, crab squid. You guys don't kill each other now. Okay, now let's throw these crab squids. Oh, wait a second. We can't even get into the alien containment. I need to create a hatch. Dang it. Well, fun fact, I've already almost died of water. I mean, like, I was very close, but, uh... You you know, my instincts came through and I killed a boomerang. All right, let's let's uh, let's let go of these crab squids. Get them in this container. I'm assuming they're not going to their full size because they need a big enough containment to be able to grow in. Now, I'm thinking, I'm a pretty boring person, but not so boring that I can't decorate a little bit. So let's add some things to this large room. Put this aquarium here. You know, you walk in, there's an aquarium to your left because you're not already so used to the water that seeing it again is dreadful. We'll put a trash can right next to the aquarium in case any fish die. And then let's do a vending machine. Are we out of glass? We're out of glass. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put the vending machine right here because we now have quartz thanks to editing. There we go. Oh, these look great. Potato mix, snacks. Potato mix, chips, that this is it. All right, and the next thing we'll put is maybe like a little counter right here. This is for the coworkers and potential friends that I don't have to come on by and, you know, eat some food, drink some coffee. Okay, and like, is there a table or something? Here's a table, yeah. It's kind of open for a bigger table, but uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers. And then I would love to eat my food at the table with a swivel chair, because that's how I roll, baby. We'll add a second one in case uh, I go mad enough that I start seeing people. Awesome. Now we have an employee dining area. No, this doesn't mean you're getting benefits now. We'll continue to add on to uh, this little large area as we play more and more, but I think that's a good start for now. The last thing I want to do very quickly is make a bunch of exterior grow beds. Now, this is something I was wanting to do last episode, but forgot. Okay, there's three grow beds. Well, let's go inside here and let's grab our seeds. Here we go. Deep shroom, gel sac seeds, and then I believe we had... Here it is, blood oil. Can never go wrong with that. And so eventually we'll just create a whole farm. I mean, I might just end up like making a whole separate area like over here or something. Just full of exterior planers. I'll have infinite resources. Well, if you stuck around long enough last episode, you'd realize I'm a horrible caretaker. After hatching the cuttlefish, which I didn't give a name because I'm a cold, heartless animal. I uh, got really busy building a bunch of stuff and just doing really smart scientific stuff that, you know, people who 
are surviving do and completely lost the cuttlefish so I don't know where it's at. It's probably packed its bags and is working a 9 to 5 job somewhere. Probably doesn't even know who I am anymore, which is sad. All that said, I think it's time to get another one. Thanks to you guys in the comments section, you gave me a little hint as to where I should go next for another cuttlefish. So we're headed to the dunes right now. And to be quite frank with you, I'd never expected to come back here ever again. It's absolutely terrifying. The last time I was here, I got scared at least seven times. I didn't sleep for a week after that episode. And here I am again, looking for a location unbeknownst to me. You guys said in the dunes biome, there is a sinkhole that I need to look for. And in that sinkhole, there's two vents. And that was my hint. So we're going to look and, and see if we can't find it. But yeah, I don't know where the sinkhole is. This might be it. Is this it? Okay, well, we'll keep on looking. I'm sure it's probably hard to miss a sinkhole, you would think. I'm surprised I haven't run into any reapers yet. It's actually very shocking to me. I'm not sure how deep I'm supposed to be looking. I'm starting to get nervous. So oh, there's a crab squid and it's not mine. Is this it? Is this the sinkhole? This is pretty deep. I'm not trying to die. It's so dark down here. I can't see a thing. Oh my god. Okay. Oh god. Oh no. No, no, no. You gotta be joking me right now. Alright. This is not good. This is not good at all. I'm relying on my luck. Oh, I need oxygen. Oh, no. I don't know if I'm gonna... Am I gonna make it up there in time? Oh my gosh. Six seconds. Three seconds. Pulling out the air bladder. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Okay, well, this is not a comfortable place to be. We don't have much time to just stay, stick around. We're currently dying of hunger and thirst. I hear a reaper. Oh no, I think this is where I was earlier. I don't think this is it. This, yeah, there's the cave. Wait a second. This looks... Oh. Is this it? Is this it? Cuttlefish. This is it. Oh, but we're dying. We're so hungry. We're dying. Pick up the bladder fish. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's eat a couple more while we're down here. I cannot believe we found that. All right. Well, we made it back. Let's go ahead and throw this cuttlefish in here with the bladder fish. There we go. Now, when you hatch, don't run away. Because if you do and I lose you again, I'll probably go to jail. Last episode, I had some issues with oxygen and catching on fire. But due to my incredible fire training skills, I didn't die. So I want to make sure I'm a little bit better prepared this time around. And you guys recommended bringing the reinforced dive suit as well as an extra air tank. And these are two things I'm absolutely going to bring with me. I have no idea why my marble melons are not growing. This is an issue. I've had these planted in here since the last episode. I don't know what the deal is. There's something wrong with my planter or planting skills. Let me know. Because I think there is an issue. These, on the other hand, are doing great. Which is perfect. This is amazing. We're going to get all these planters fully filled up before we leave here. There we go. So yeah, if these are growing pretty fast, I don't know why my interior one wouldn't be. But that's all right. We'll figure it out. So let's go ahead and head back to Life Pod 2, where we'll go into the Lost River and explore some of the things that we left off on last episode, including the blue tablet that we were missing to go into the new alien facility, as well as a brand new alien facility. We have seen it before but we've never seen inside of it. So we're going to try and get in there today. I just hope I don't die on the way there. I know having a Seamoth would make this a whole lot easier. Oh, God. Oh, no. Hold on. I don't want to use the air. I actually want to use the system. I might die. I might die. So real fast, I believe to get uh, oxygen inside this, this tank here, I think I have to switch them out. It'll fill with oxygen, and then I think I'm good to replace it now. Okay, perfect. I was a little worried. I thought like halfway through here, I was like, wait, does it have oxygen? Because it would be like me to need that as an emergency and it not have oxygen, so... 
Oh my gosh. Am I going to have to use this already? Okay, no, we're right next to the base. We should be good to just use the air bladder. That would have been hilarious if I was like five minutes in and I already had to use the extra air tank. Okay, so we made it back to the Cyclops and prawn suit. And while normally I would probably take my prawn suit to uh, these alien sites, I'm going to do something a bit riskier because it was asked, even though I'm terrified. I'm going to take the Cyclops down to the very lowest point. Well, I don't know if it's the lowest point, but down to the lava where we were last episode so i'm kind of freaked out but in the meantime here's some lithium so we actually have everything we need if we go to the modification station here to make a ultra high capacity tank so now i'm even more covered than i was before and i do have the reinforced dive suit on me so let's go and switch these out so i can fill up my air tank Okay, well, we didn't have to switch them out. They're the exact same thing. Okay, here we go. Man, bringing the Cyclops all the way down here is so nerve-wracking for me. Just because I'm not a great driver, and, well, there's so many different enemies down here, and that's including lava, that could potentially destroy this thing in seconds, including myself. Oh, oh, hitting stuff, hitting things. I'm surprised I haven't seen the sea monster yet. Oh, there it is. Nope, it's definitely still here. It didn't move anywhere. The good news is I think this is where I had found the cave at before. I'll just kind of sneak this Cyclops up here. We're at 24%. Oh, that's nice. Okay, power down the engine. So I wonder if it was actually charging while we were driving it. That's interesting. Let's come down here. Let's disembark on our journey. Now, I could be wrong, but wasn't the cave system just like over here or something? I mean, maybe it wasn't over here, but I thought it was like on this mountain that we went to, which honestly just underlines the point of how lucky I was that I came across it. Because I'm intentionally here and I'm not even seeing it. Oh, here we go. Here it is. Okay. That's lava. That will kill me. And here is the alien base that is supposed to have the blue tablet. And I just missed it, which is totally believable. There we go. Okay, so where was this thing? Is that it right there? Oh. How did I miss this? Oh my gosh. Oh, here it is. That was easy. Is there anything I need that I could get close by or on that island? Come here to me. That's creep. Okay, that I'm anyways. <laughs> Why does that sound very close right now? Because it is very close right now. If I had a grenade launcher with crash fish, I'd be shooting it at you right now. I hope you know that. Okay. Now it's totally possible. I already have the third depth module. I don't. Okay, perfect. Actually, we want to be very careful doing this because as soon as we take it out, we're going to start taking damage. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Please. Bear with me. Don't destroy yourself. There we go. Now we can go 1,700 meters, which I think is perfectly fine for where we're going to go. Okay, so I believe... Let's turn on the engine here. I think we just need to go southwest. Okay, the scary thing is, is I don't have any sort of defense system against this monster. None whatsoever. So if it attacks us, we will probably die. Oh, okay, here it is. Yeah, here we, here we go. Where did we go from here? Oh, was it in here? They obviously see this little narrow hole, but there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, well, maybe that could fit through here. Be a tight fit. Okay. Yep, okay, this is it. Yep, I'm already getting hurt. Well, we'll try it. But before we do, I am pretty hungry, so I really hope I have some sort of food source on here. Even if it's just those gel sacks, I'll eat them. I have a tough stomach. 32? Eh, that'll work. I keep meaning to bring the interior planter with the marble melons on it, but I mean, you heard me earlier. I, I checked the, the marble melons. They weren't growing for some reason, but at some point we'll get them on the Cyclops and get them growing. Oh yeah, it's getting hot in here. Now I'm curious if we're going to charge even faster just being down here since it's so hot, but I am incredibly uncomfortable right now. I mean, do we need to actually bring it all the way to the, the base or I guess we're taking it all the way there. All right, here we are. We finally get to see what is past those doors. We have the blue tablet now. Man, I parked that kind of close to the ground. All right. I heard your voice, strange alien, and I have answered. I'm here. Uh, 
Hello? Is anybody there? No, going back now. Oh my god. Well, they know I'm here now. Translating local alien broadcast. Warning, vaccine development program terminated. Emperor egg etching project terminated. Life specimens terminated. Evacuate immediately. Whoa, time to start scanning a bunch of stuff. Did it say emperor egg? What is that? Ancient blade, ooh. An ancient earth blade dating back to the 13th century. Blood samples on the blade match the DNA of seven separate heads of state from the period. This evidence supports the theory that the aliens are an ancient space-born civilization engaged in the surreptitious sur study of less developed species. Strange carving. Alien carving. This carving is hundreds of thousands of years old and made from an unrecognized natural fiber grown on an unknown planet. It bears striking resemblance to the old earth yin yang symbol. Two competing theories may explain this similarity. Aliens visited Earth prior to the 4th century BC and influenced the development of ancient Chinese philosophy. The concept of yin and yang is universal, since yin and yang describes the fundamental interdependency of seemingly opposite forces. It may be a necessary existential understanding in some form in all sufficiently developed civilizations. The tapering of two circles, union, into opposed and infinite simile, if you guys know these words, don't judge me. Small points, the finite, is one logical way to represent this understanding and may have been developed independently by species other than humans. Alien statue. This is like their version of a museum. There's like tourists coming in and looking at all this stuff. Alien statue. This artifact is unpowered, suggesting it served a ceremonial rather than practical purpose. The pyramid resembles vines, spiraling upwards towards the warm blue stone mounted above it. It may represent a plant found on the alien's homeworld, a building of religious import, or even the gravitational pull of their home solar system. Man, these are cool. It's stuff like this that does make you appreciate like the developers of the game. They put so much time and effort into all this stuff. Holographic projector. This device contains a network apparatus in a holographic projection unit. They have uh, internet on 36, 37B. Might be fiber. It was likely used as a communications relay, capturing and projecting the image of the user to a remote location. There do not appear to be any other devices in range. Rudimentary tablet. This device shares many similarities with the tablets used to access the alien facilities, although its structure is rather less complex. It may have served a similar purpose, granting security access and storing relevant data, and was thus kept here as a form of legacy support. That's their version of the floppy disk. You know what, before we go scan all the rest of those, let's kind of look around a little bit more. There's other rooms and stuff over here, so. This is actually way bigger than I thought it would be. I hope I don't miss anything while I'm here. Here's another portal. I won't go through that right away. Okay, so we'll have to check out this portal and see where it goes to. On to the next room, which I think is over here. Oh, unless they all lead to the same room, maybe. Whoa, no, they don't. Wow. Is this a ocean theme park? Are there kids sliding down this tube? I didn't pay an admission fee and I don't have a ticket. Outflow pipe. Hmm. Enzyme host peepers leaving the containment facility. Inflow pipe. Peepers entering the containment facility. Okay, so what's happening to them? The pipes drawing water into the containment's facility are filled with peepers arriving from the surface. This fish shows no sign of distress. The specimens scanned have all consumed high quantities of seeds and organic matter from the surface. Some specimens are beginning to show signs of infection. What about leaving? The outflow pipes are filled with peepers traveling back towards the surface. Specimens show no symptom of infection. All specimens scanned are carrying enzyme 42, which data suggests inhibits the bacterium. This is where the cure is. Dude. Specimen stomach cavities are otherwise empty, suggesting they may have purged the contents before entering the pipes. If peepers have evolved to distribute the enzyme via the pipe network, this may explain part of the mechanism by which life on 4546B has survived since the bacterial outbreak. Dude, this is interesting. So I'm thinking the cure is in this building probably. So let's head out of this room. I think that's all that's in here. I could be missing something. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I was the main thing. 
data terminal, ventilation control. Water flowing to and from the primary containment facility is being automatically controlled, independently of other safeguards. Data on the water composition has been recorded. Inflow. Water is being drawn from different biomes around the surface of the planet. The water temperature is considerably lower than the volcanic environment outside the facility, while microorganism and nutrient counts are substantially higher. Outflow. Oxygen-deprived water is being flooded from the system and recycled back to the surface. Yeah, so this is definitely like intelligent creation, obviously. However, I think the intelligent beings are maybe dead, but maybe not. We've been hearing something. They've been communicating with me via my Bluetooth or my brain. What's in this third room here? This is another portal. I'm assuming there's probably four portals here that all connect to the rest of the alien facilities around the island. That would be my guess. Let's, uh, let's head over here. There is another thing here. We need another blue tablet. I really hope the other blue tablet's here. Before we check, let's go ahead and uh, scan. Oh my God. Hey, get out of here. Hopefully they don't all start attacking me now. Start scanning these. Translation device. This device stores linguistic data from over a thousand different languages. The core of the device may allow alien text to be read and translated. Analysis of the onboard data reveals a number of ancient Earth languages, and the term CHBC Live appears many times in the device's data. Its import is unclear. The device seems to be configured to translate into the designer's language. It will not work the other way around. Oh, okay. Alien object. Emergent. This rock-like object features organic as well as mechanical parts, and there is some genetic and technological crossover with the design of the self-warping constructs encountered elsewhere. It appears to serve no purpose in its current state and is awaiting some kind of activation sequence. Materials such as this may have been a fundamental building block of the aliens' technology or even the aliens themselves. That might be an egg, dude. No, it said building block. It's interesting. Crescent artifact. Tracking implant. This construct is emitting a high bandwidth signal consistent with alien transmissions intercepted elsewhere. DNA on the exterior indicates it was once implanted inside one of the life forms indigenous to 4546b. Its size suggesting the subject was a Leviathan class organism. Beyond tracking and broadcasting its location, the implant may also have recorded biological data on the subject. However, this data cannot be retrieved. So if that's inside what was ever here on this planet, they were pretty big because that's huge. <laughs> Unusual box. This device contains a highly unstable radioactive isotope, likely to destroy all organisms exposed to it, while leaving physical structures intact. Although it would function perfectly well as a weapon, it was more likely used to sterilize spaces for later inhabitation. Without instructions, it would be unwise to interact with it. Yeah, probably won't be. <laughs> Okay, this is just an empty case. Maybe we'll be able to make our own. Nanobots? Scan shows some form of advanced nanobot inside this seemingly empty case. These bots are substantially smaller than any developed within the Federation, and it is not possible to ascertain their exact function. It would, however, be unwise to release them. Well, let's see if that blue tablet's around here. And while we're looking for it, let's try not to get attacked by another one of these robot spiders. Oh, and this is basically just another... This room appears to be a biological archive storing more than 40 indigenous egg specimens in different states of development. Whoa, this is cool. Dude, this one's huge. Let's read this real quick. Oh, here we go. See Emperor Leviathan research data. Oh, no way. We have this egg? Specimen size categories have been adjusted upward to accommodate this species. Feeding and digestion. Alien research data indicates that despite its size, this species feeds entirely on microorganisms it filters from the water, which themselves depend on a complicated ecosystem of plant and animal life. So those huge things only eat microorganisms? That's crazy. Reproduction. Large ovary-like organs are carried in the creature's middle section, suggesting that like other species on the planet, it produces eggs. 
However, internal scar tissue indicates probable infertility. Enzyme 42. The emperor manufactures enzyme 42 within its stomach cavity to break down its food and will occasionally expel it into the surrounding waters. This substance was found to neutralize the effects of the bacterium and its presence in the ecosystem today would explain how life on this planet survived the outbreak. Weird. Okay. It would remain to be explained by what mechanism the enzyme is being delivered. Health. Comparative analysis of size of metabolic rates indicate the specimen captured by the researchers was approximately 1,600 years old. Extensive internal and external scar tissue suggest it had lived well in excess of the peak lifespan for its species. While a healthy emperor specimen may have held some potential as a cure, it is unlikely any research subject survived quarantine procedures. Interesting. Now, here's the issue. We need another blue tablet. And I don't know where to get the other blue tablet. What is this? Preserved fetus? Found preserved in a display case, it was likely a child of the adult specimen contained within the facility. Physiology. Superficial damage to the specimen indicates it was artificially removed from its egg casing. Stunted tissue development suggests the organism expired during the removal process. Tissue samples have been taken from the digestive tract. It appears the aliens were attempting to formulate a cure for the bacterium from enzymes produced in the specimen's digestive system. Without a young, healthy specimen, these efforts were in vain. Interesting. Okay, so if we do get a hold of that egg and we're able to grow it, we can maybe come up with a cure. This is not good. Okay, I need to find something to eat fast. I'm about to die, and that would not be good. Let's grab some food here. Okay, eat that. Okay, we're at 20. There we go. That should be good for now. I do need to get the prawn suit out of here. And to do that successfully, I might need to bring this up just a bit. And let's enter the prawn suit from here. All right, so we just need two more ion cubes. Oh, wait a second. Oh, no, I don't have the drill arm. Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. Plan B. Unless we can craft one, that might be worth looking into. We can craft an orange one I saw at one point. Oh, Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I cannot believe I thought about that. We don't have another ion cube, though. Maybe we have one of the Cyclops. Oh, we do. We have one. Yes. Okay. And I know we have Kyanite, right? Oh, no. Do we not have Kyanite? But how much Kyanite did it say we needed? Two. Okay. So we need one more Kyanite to make this blue tablet so we can go past this door. I'm going to head back up to the surface and I'm going to go look in that cave because I remember the cave had single pieces and I know there's one more piece in there. I remember. Oh, this is where the other cave is. Oh, wow. That, that was really close. I didn't, I think we actually went in through a different entrance last time. Maybe here's the other piece of Kyanite. We're running out of oxygen here. I do have another air canister, thankfully. That just saved my life. So thank you to the individual in the comment section that recommended that. So now that we have the other piece of kyanite, we should be able to craft a blue tablet that we needed. There we go. Now this extra blue tablet should be everything we need, unless we need to use the orange tablet, which we have, to get past the next barrier, the next wall. Here we go. What could be on the other side? I'm a little nervous. Emergency. Starvation imminent. Seek calorie intake immediately. Whoa. I have my knife with me. In case I have to fight anybody off. Oh, a pool. Interesting. I mean, should I go in there? Guess why not, right? Oh, dang. I'm freaked out right now. That's what was talking to me? 
I don't know if I have enough oxygen for this. So it's just stuck down here? Unlike other alien facilities, scans indicate this location supports a diverse and healthy ecosystem. Explanation unclear at this time. Detecting unusually passive behavioral patterns in nearby predators. Reason unknown. That's weird. Environment scans indicate the water here is rich with a rare plankton-like life form which depends on the organic detritus produced by the ecosystem around it. That thing's huge, man. So those things can talk. I wonder why the other one wasn't talking to me. I think these are the eggs, which if they are, will probably have the, uh, the cure in them. Sea Emperor eggs. Shell. Uncommonly strong shell lining. Organic growth on the exterior suggests that these eggs may be hundreds or thousands of years old. Alien tubes. Alien devices penetrate the outer shell layer, likely designed to supply them with nutrients and isolate them from the surrounding environment. Oh. So that's, I think, what the peeper thing is, right? Maybe? Like many eggs on 4546B, these do not contain a nutrient supply which is slowly exhausted by the embryo. Instead, they exist in a form of natural stasis. Stasis? Stasis? Don't sue me. Awaiting appropriate hatching conditions. Fetal organism. There is a high genetic match between these organisms and the Leviathan in the vicinity. They appear to be stable and healthy. It is likely that ideal hatching conditions for these eggs vary considerably from ideal survival conditions for the parent. So this is an incubator? The emperor specimen's eggs are attached to some form of incubator. In a normal life cycle, it seems likely that the sea emperors would have buried their eggs in shallower waters, where different organic materials in the soil would have triggered a hatching response. The incubator suggests the aliens had resorted to developing artificial hatching enzymes, which would simulate the egg's natural hatching environment, but were unable to discover the formula. With extensive information on the sea emperors themselves, it may still be possible to fabricate an artificial hatching enzyme using indigenous ingredients. However, the only so surviving source of that information may be the sea emperor itself. Hmm. What was that? Insert ion cube. Oh, she's looking down. I need an ion cube. All right, this ion cube might be what it's looking for to like activate, you know, this this incubator. I'm not 100% sure. It may not be that simple, but we'll throw this ion cube on there and see what happens. My young need to hatch, to play. Outside this place, we have been here so long. The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. Whoa. Okay. I can do that. Insert hatching enzymes. Where do I get the hatching enzymes? Never mind. Let's take a look here. Let's see what happens. We're not leaving just yet. <laughs> it wasn't talking to me, so I was thinking it was my time to leave. With the passage you've opened, my young can leave this place. But first they must feel the time is right and break free of their shells. This is what the others could not force from me. To you, I give the secret willingly. Oh, dang. New blueprint acquired. Oh, dang. I just got the hatching enzymes. Here we go. An organic substance derived from plants found in the emperor's natural breeding grounds designed to trigger a hatching response. We need eye stalk seed, seed crown seed, fungal sample, ghost weed seed, and bulb bush sample. Those are five things that we're going to have to get next episode. Wow. Uh, that was crazy. I was not expecting all that. I was not expecting that level of 
of depth of story. I'm going to go up to the surface here and just get some air, but uh, I think we're going to probably call it here for today's episode. I cannot wait to see what happens whenever we get the uh, hatching ingredients together. I think we're coming close to the end of this series, but uh, it's been a blast so far. Look forward to seeing you guys next episode. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.